Isn't that amazing? Yep. You know, I thought about, uh, I remember when we had four kids at home, and uh, I remember when the day come, wasn't nobody there but me and Glenda. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought about Tracy and them. Uh, they're, they're still young. There comes a day that you start back over. Mm -hmm. Kids go. And, uh, when I was three and four, I was cute. <laughs> but in the seventies, I'm trying to stay well. You know. In the 60s, it's gray. In the 70s, it costs a lot to stay well. When you get 80, it looks like it's aimless. When you get 90, you're just numb. We don't know when. I want you to look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And uh, I want to read a verse of scripture. And uh, I, want, I want to preach on what a day that will be. You know, uh, I know for a fact, I thought about, uh, you know, I don't know when I'm going, but I do know I'm going. And I want to read from uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Then I want to turn to Revelation chapter 21. And uh, this morning, I want to uh, just uh, be brief and uh, just talk about what a day that will be. And uh, we know that uh, it's exciting to live in this day. It's in the last days before our Lord Jesus Christ comes. And, and uh, I'm proud this, I am so proud that I'm not going to hell. Yeah, amen. I am so proud that I'm saved this morning. I am so proud that I, I'm his child. I am so proud that my name is written down in the Lamb's book of life this morning. And I'm so excited to meet that I'm going to meet him. I have no idea these descriptions of him in the Word of God. But I'm telling you, I'm going to be amazed when I see him, Brother Terry. Yep. You're going to be amazed right. when you see him. I mean, it's going to be, you know, all of my, used to be down in Jackson County, down in Maysville and Commerce, where I'm from, all, they were C's, S-E-A-Y, everywhere. Now, there's not a C in the county. And that tells you, that tells you, one by one, they leave. One, they, had, they didn't move out of the county. They died. They died. And, uh, uh, you know, one generation comes, they live, they live, then, uh, then they die. Yep. I, saw, I saw on the news a lady, did you see that, was born, and uh, she's still living uh, in 18 and 99. And so she's 117 years old, the oldest woman, the person in the world. And uh, uh, I don't know when, I don't know when, but uh, the Bible tells us that we're leaving. Now, notice what the Bible said, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever uh, be, will, be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Now I want to give you five things in this one verse real quickly. Then I want to go to Revelation chapters number 21. There is a coming now, you can't deny that because the Bible said it. There is a coming. Notice, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. Then, not only there's a coming, but there's a coming out. 
Notice this. Notice this. There's a coming, then there's a coming out. The Bible said the dead in Christ shall rise first. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I'm proud this morning that I'm not going to the cemetery. Yes. I'm proud that I'm not going to the funeral home. I'm going to heaven. Amen. Amen. The Lord don't, yes. when you die, he don't make bypasses. I mean, he don't send you on another route. You go right straight to heaven. Amen. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Then uh, the Bible said the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. There's a coming. The dead in Christ shall rise first. There's a coming out. Then the Bible said there's a catching up. Notice what he said. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up. There's a catching up. Hey Amen. We're going to be caught up. We're going to be, uh, uh, there's coming a day, there's coming a day. I promise you a hundred years from today you won't be at revival. Yeah. I promise you that. I mean, I, uh, if I'm going to be at revival a hundred years from now, I'd be 174 years old. Lord Jesus, who'd want to live? The Bible said Sarah lived to be 127. I mean, after Isaac was born, I mean, she didn't have him though. She was around, uh, around 91, I guess, when she had him. And she died at 127. So we're put here to die. You know, the Bible said, the Bible said that he gives us eternal security. But it ain't here. It's yonder. That's right. I mean, listen. I mean, we're going to be with him forever and ever. Yes, sir. And so, so there's a catching up. The Bible said that we'll be caught up together. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Amen. We're going up. Heaven's up. Uh, it's not down. Heaven is up this yeah. morning. I mean, yeah. look up. Jesus is right. coming. He's right. up. Right. He's up. Where's yeah. he at? He's on the throne. Yeah. Where's he at? Where is heaven? Is it 2,000 miles that way or 2,000 miles that way? No. Heaven is just one breath away. Right. Amen. Yeah. You stop breathing. You, If you're saved, you'll be in heaven. Amen. Then, I want you to notice not only there's a catching up, but there is a continuation. Notice, what, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. There's a, a coming, a coming out, a catching up, then there's a continuation. We'll always, notice, notice what the Bible said, uh, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Did you, I want you to look at it. Did you know when you've been there 10,000 years, it's just going to be as excited as it was the very minute you got there? Right. That's right. Nobody will ever be bored in heaven. That's right. Sometime I get bored sitting on the porch. Yeah. Hey Amen. I mean, sometimes you just get bored. I told Brenda yesterday or one day, I said, I wish we could go somewhere. She said, well, let's go. I said, we ain't able. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm proud. I'm proud the Bible said that so shall we ever be with the Lord. Then not only there's coming, the coming out, the catching out, the continuation, but there is a comfort. Yeah. Notice what he said. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. There's going to be a comforting. Oh, it's going to be so comforting. I, I need to read you this. I, I need to read you, read you this. I want you to notice in uh, Revelation chapters number 21, verse number 4. This is, in verses number 4, what a day that will be. And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. Nobody will ever be broken hearted. Amen. 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 Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. That just makes me want to shout. Amen. I mean, uh, and I could shout this morning. I'm yes, telling you, I feel good. I mean, this is the first time I, feel, I must be fixing to go to heaven. I mean, I feel the best today I've felt in a year. I mean, I, 
I mean, I've, I've been walking all morning. My feet's not a hurt. And this is the first time since September my feet had not been killing me. And, uh, man, I feel so good. Uh, uh, I just feel like I could run a mile. And, uh, but I'm proud the Bible said in verses 4, And God shall wipe away all the tears. Never, you'll never be broken hearted again. Amen. Isn't it wonderful you'll never, never, you know, if, if Jesus don't come, if right. Jesus, my kids will gather one day in a waiting room or they'll gather at the house on the porch and uh, uh, they'll, uh, they'll try to comfort my wife and they'll comfort one another because there's going to be a separation day. Every family in the city here has had that day. You've had them separation days when, when separation day came uh, and it's tough and it's hard. Uh, they's weeping and crying. Uh, but I'm proud, praise God, uh, that we're going to heaven uh, and never yeah, be man. separated. Uh, nobody will be, ever be separated. Uh, uh, we'll be in the family of God. I was reading about them worshiping that crowd of people in heaven and worshiping. Uh, and I put myself right in the middle of it. And I was right in the middle of heaven and worshiping. Amen. I said, I'm in this crowd that I'm reading about here. This is the crowd that I'm in. Amen. Amen. I like this crowd. Yes. <laughs> and so the Bible said, uh, uh, and there shall be no more death. Yeah. It's, you know, really, really, you really get the thing about dying, it gets kind of nerve wracking. I mean, you get kind of nervous. I was sitting in my recliner, felt like a uh, Thursday, felt like a tractor trailer just pulled up on my chest, throw it out of gear and just sat there. Well, in a minute, my shoulder started hurting and I had pains shooting down under here. I got up and took me a baby aspirin. And uh, I remember, you know, and I told Gunner, I said, uh, I need a nitroglycerin. I put a nitroglycerin under my tongue. And boy, that blowed them veins in my head. It cleaned them out. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't about a minute. I could feel them veins opening up. And, uh, and, uh, and they just, I took that nitroglycerin and they just quit. Well, Glenda said, well, it's got to be your heart if it's quit. I said, well, I said, you can't go to heaven with this heart. That's right. Amen. Thank God. Yeah. I'm proud. The Bible said, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? He swallowed it up. Hallelujah. Yeah, I mean, listen, folks, uh, we're just going through the shadow of death. Uh, That's right. Uh, it's like a bumblebee coming out. He pulled the stinger out and it can't sting you, but you still dodge it. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> you still dodge. You still dodge that stain. Yeah. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I believe every saint of God look at me, you that's asleep, if you'll just wake up for a minute, you need to hear what I'm going to say. <laughs> hear me. This morning, I believe God's done took the sting out of death. Yes, sir. And, uh, then the Bible said, neither there's no sorrow. Won't you look at me? You'll never get your feelings hurt again. Hey. No. No. This fellow called me one day this week and he said, you know who this is? I said, I have no idea. But I said, don't cuss me out and hang up. And there was a preacher down south, south Georgia. Hear me this morning. The Bible said, sorrow crying neither shall any more pain. For the former things are passed away. There comes a day and there comes an hour when your body gets to the age that you have pain. Yeah. You say, you know, I'm young, preacher. Yeah, but you're going to get old if the Lord don't come. Amen. I mean, you're going to get old. 
But I'm proud God's going to take all the pain away. All the pain. Now I want to give you my message. I want you to notice. And I'll be through in 10 minutes. The Bible said in Revelation 21 and verses 5, what a day that's going to be. Or what a day that will be. It's a place of all things where all things are new. Yes, sir. In verses 5. What a day that will be when we go. The Bible said in verses number 5, And he that sat upon the throne and said, Behold, I make all things new. Everything will be new. Everybody likes to get a new house. Everybody likes to get a new car. Everybody likes to get new clothes. Yep. But I'm telling you, I believe that we'll wear the same robe forever. Yeah. Amen. We'll have the same mansion forever. Yeah. They'll have no U-Hauls in heaven. Yeah. Nobody will have to move. They'll pull us out. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Thank God there'll be no money. There's gold on the street, but we don't have nowhere to spend it. And ain't no money. And and we're so we're gonna be so pure and full. We're gonna be so pure and so have so much holiness on us that we won't want that gold. Right. You know. Folks, a lot of folks just live for greed. I mean, they they think they're gonna when they die and have the funeral, there's gonna be a new hall behind the hearse, but there ain't gonna be no U-Haul. I mean, folks are just dying for greed. Yeah. I mean, trying to make that last dollar. Hey, all your kids are going to do is fight over it and stay mad the rest of their life over it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. yeah. Listen, I told my brother after dad and mom died, I said we'd have been a whole lot better off if dad had been on the welfare. Because everybody stayed cool then. See, my kids ain't got nothing to fight over. I've been a Baptist preacher all of my life. And I promise you, if, you, if you're if you a Baptist preacher of a little Baptist shirt, you ain't going to get rich. Amen. You know. But I appreciate what you've done for me. Amen. 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 I mean, I brag. And everybody tells me that they'll come here they, and they don't know a thing in the world about this church. They say, oh, they've been awful good to you. Yeah. That's what they say. They, they ain't never been here. They said, they've really been awful good to you up there. I said, yeah, they've really, I, I reckon me and Glenda's bragged so much about the church. Yeah. You know, yeah. that they think we're living in heaven up here in the mountains. Well, we are. Hallelujah. Right. Did you know what? In the wisdom of God, don't you look at me. In the wisdom of God, we already died. Hey. Right. Did you know that? The Bible said he has made us sit together in heavenly places. In the wisdom of God, you already in heaven. For as God's concerned, I'm already there. You say, preacher, I don't believe that. That's fine. I believe it. And I'm going to have a good time of believing it. I'm just going to wait for the removal. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. But anyway, in verse 5, he said, uh, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for well, these words are true and faithful. Jesus is truth. Amen. Every word in this Bible is truth. Amen. Did you know what? The Bible said you've got to be saved to go to heaven. Right. And you've got to be saved to go to heaven. You've got to be saved to go to heaven. Then I want you to notice. Did you know what? He's going to make all things. When we get a glimpse, when we get a glimpse, and we see it for the first time, the first glimpse, we're going to be in awe. Oh, yeah. And amazed. Yes, sir. Amen. And we all, Jesus said we're going to have a body like him. And we all going to be in our thirties. Woo! That ought to make a shout. 
going to be in our 30s again. Man, isn't that amazing? Brother, we'll like that woman. Praise God. But she said we won't be husband and wife. And she is right. She's going to be my sister in the Lord. Amen. Amen. But notice, it's a place in Revelation 21 and 3. It's a place of fullness of joy. Look at 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. What Tim said in Sunday school out of the book of Psalms. And he and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Hey, guess what? We're going to be together all the time. Amen. You say, well, this ain't much preaching. Well, praise God, when you get to heaven, you'll appreciate it. Because I told you before you got there. Right. <laughs> Amen. Listen, listen. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. It's really amazing. It's a place of uh, fullness of joy. And Psalm 6 and 11, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. He showed us the path. Now he's given us his presence. Amen. Now we're looking to meet him and be with him. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Then, not only is the place of the fullness of joy, but it's a place of absolute holiness. Amen. You know what? You ain't never been this pure. You may be a good person, but you ain't this good. Yes. I mean, we're going to be pure. Amen. I mean, in verse 15 of, uh, I mean, verse 27, verse 27, Revelation 21. Notice, notice, it's a place of absolute holiness. I mean, I mean, it's really amazing. It's really amazing. It's in verses 27 it said, And they shall in no wise enter unto it anything that defileth either whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. It's going to be a place of holiness. Amen. Amen. It's going to be a place of pure holiness. Yes, sir. I mean, folks, you talking about being filled with God. I mean, being, I mean, just being holiness. How can you imagine being in a body that you'll never think nothing bad about nobody? Right. Yep. That's amazing, ain't it? Yes. Huh? Boy, I have, I have to really pray. Yes. I mean, honestly. Yes. Brother Tim, I really have and I, man, I've, I've had to sit on this front bench here. And I say, oh, God, plead the blood on my mind before I get up. Right. It's a place, it's a place that is uh, uh, pure holiness this morning. And uh, the Bible said uh, in Revelation 22, uh, in verse 15, And there shall uh, in no wise enter unto it anything that defile, and whosoever worketh abomination and maketh a liar. But I want to close with this. It's a place of absolute worship. Amen. It's a place of absolute worship. <coughs> Revelation said this in chapters number 7, verse 9. After this I beheld and woe a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindred and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with a white robe and palms in their hands. 
Now I want you to look at it. You in this crowd. Yeah, I sure will. You in, you in this. Yeah. Your loved ones is in this crowd. Amen. I mean, that, we're going to be, you know, you say, you in this crowd right here. You say, I don't believe that. Well, you probably won't be in it. <laughs> I mean, if you don't believe it, you probably won't be in there. We all going to be in this crowd. Hey. Notice what the Bible said. After this, now this ain't what I think, or you think, or mama thinks, or grandpa thinks. This is what the Bible says. Hey. You know, this is what the Bible. You see, my family, on, on my mama's side, they were Baptists. And on my daddy's side, they were far baptized holiness. What in the world is far baptized holiness? They didn't believe in wearing a watch. They didn't believe in wearing rings, short sleeve shirts. But listen, the Lord got me before the Baptists did. Amen. I got saved first. Yes. Then I joined the Baptists. <laughs> and if I thought it was wrong, I'd get out of it. Right. But I think it's the nearest thing to the Word of God this morning. Amen. Listen. This is the crowd. This is the crowd. We're the crowd. We're the crowd. Miss Carl, would you come to the piano? We're the crowd this morning that's going to be there. Right. It's going to be an awesome, awesome worship service. It's going to be awesome. I mean, I mean, you know, I've been studying on some things we all got in common. Now, have you ever thought about it? you ever thought about all things that we have in common as a family of God? There's a lot of stuff that, that we got in common. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, to be in this worship. We got a lot of church members here. But we got church members that care nothing about God. They care not about God's church, this church. They care not about this word. And they don't care not about other people. You know, that exists. I mean, we got, that, we got, every church has got that kind of member that cares nothing about God. Cares not whatsoever anything about God. I'm going to tell you something. They care not about the church. They, they care nothing about the church. They care not about the Word of God. And they care not about God's people. Do you believe them people are saved? Do you believe them people are saved? Do you believe they're going to be in that bunch of worshiping God? You say, preacher, what about once saved, always saved? Well, let's talk about really getting saved. That's what that's talking about. We're really getting in. Amen. I know everybody is not like me. I know. Not, hey, I want you to look at me. Nobody has never knocked on my door and invited me to church. Nobody. Nobody. I remember, I remember Jehovah's Witness when I was a little bitty boy used to come and keep daddy out of church. They'd bring in them books and They'd keep my daddy and me and mama. She'd learn how to drive. She didn't have no driver's life. We had a 46 Ford. I will never forget. She'd turn off sometime and go through the corn patch. You know. She was just learning and I was holding on. We had to drive about three miles to make an old cow and I'd milk. I'd hold that bucket coming back in the front seat. She'd go down through a field over Tercy. Some of you don't know what Tercy's are, but it's a high place, place on the ground. You bump. That map would just go up and down. But she'd take me to church every Sunday. Amen. And we'd start to get out of the car, she'd give me a nickel to put in Sunday school. Amen. Oh, never. Yeah, That's right. She'd give me that nickel to put in the Sunday school place. Church didn't have but one Sunday school room. All us little kids was in that Sunday school room. 
I, I remember sitting there barefoot in no shoes, part of the wrong And I heard the story. Amen. Everybody ain't like me. Everybody don't want to go to church. But if you saved, you got saved just like I did. Amen. Amen. You got saved just like I got saved. Yes, sir. I want to go Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. I don't know why. I have no idea why. Wonder why, Tim. Wonder, wonder. I mean, you know, I don't know what it is. It's just, I don't know. When I can't go to church, take me to heaven. Right. Yes, take me to heaven. When I can't go to church. Somebody said, well, they have it in the nursing home. I don't want to go to that church. Right. I want to go to a brick mortar. Yes, sir. Got steps. Got a pulpit in it, pews yes, and a piano. Yeah. Folks that sit on the pews. Yeah. That's the kind of church I want to go to. <laughs> Let me ask you something. What a day that's going to be. What a day. What a day. How's it going to be, really? Honestly, when you stand before the Lord Jesus comes. <coughs> How's it going to be? Would you stand with us? You know what? You really need to know this morning. You really need to know. If you're not saved, you need to come. If you don't have a burden for the lost and seeing the lost, you know, I thought, I, was, I just want to say this, and I'm going to, I want us to say. You know what I said to myself? I said, God's got a problem. I said that this way. I said, God's got a problem. How's God got a problem? He said the fields are white on the harvest. And the laborers are few. God can't get nobody to go to work for him. God, God can't get people to go to work and see the need of getting folks in the church and getting folks saved. How many did you invite to your Sunday school to be in Sunday school, to sit in Sunday school with you this morning at Revival Bell? How many did you invite to come to church to worship service? No, sat under singing and preaching this morning. How many did we invite? What a day that's going to be when all of God's children gather home. Oh, all the righteousness and the perfectness and His wholeness we shall enjoy. Say, if you're not saved, would you come? There's an awesome feeling glowing. I can tell somebody is yes. coming. It's a feeling like I've never known before. Did you come this morning? The Savior is preparing for a very special moment. His return. Those who waited for so long, and in the twinkling of oh, an God. eye, the church shall gloriously arise. What a meeting of God's millions, apparelled as his bride, Satan's reign be destroyed as all heaven lifts their voice we shall gloriously arise in the yes. twinkling of an eye little children won't be Place a need in your heart would you come broken heart won't be sighing. God himself shall wipe away all our tears. Yes.
Yes. But the greatest joy of heaven is seeing him yes. who has forgiven. And I can't wait yes. to bow and thank him for at least a million years. Yep. church shall gloriously arise. What a meeting of God's millions appareled as yes. his bride. Satan's reigns will be destroyed. 